Uh, I'm Justin Stanley. I'm a producer, mixer, composer, someone who turns off cell phones before an interview. <laughs> I always, you know, I tend to kind of get too in my head and too, you know, I kind of become a grumpy person. So <laughs> I'm lucky that, yeah, I'm very lucky that I can uh, work with a really eclectic mix of people. And I really haven't really planned anything apart from just the desire to, to make music. I was, I was uh, at school, I was always tapping. I wanted to be a drummer. That was like or the only focus I had. So I was tapping on the table at, at school, I got into trouble all the time, ended up having a meeting with the principal, with my mum, and, and uh, the principal said, look, Justin's always tapping and humming and looking out the window. And my mum turned to me and said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, all I want to do is make music. And she got up out of her seat and shook the principal's hand and said, thanks for the education. So I was like playing in pubs when I was 15 and my mum would have to drive me to the gigs and you know we shoved all these drums in a V-dub beetle and she'd pull up and then she was the, she was the coolest. And yeah from that it led to getting interested in writing and three months later in a writing session I got a call uh, and it was a friend of mine going, there's a bass player, I said look there's a band asking they need a bass player and a keyboard player trying to join the band. Through that, I worked with a bunch of different producers, um, like an Australian producer called Mark Opitz and Chris Kimsey, who did all the Glimmer Twins, like the Stones, like um, Black and Blue, and Peter Frampton Comes Alive, and like some amazing records. So through that experience, I was always the, the guy in the band going, how do you do that? And really annoying, like trying to work out how this console works, how all this gear works. I don't read music, no, no. I can slowly pick it out now, but um, I, I can't sight read. And most people I work with, you know, a sheet of making a script never really comes up unless it's a score or um, a string chart. And, and again, if I'm hearing something in my head, I'll just hum it out or play it on something else. So yeah, I'm definitely from the school of just use your instinct and Use your ear and your gut. You know, I'm a big believer that anyone can do that. I think you kind of embody something. It's almost like acting. You kind of, when you grab an instrument, you um, try and embody that character of that person you think is playing. And that gives you a big step up on how you might react to this instrument. Or like a horn player, like any, everyone has a thing. what led me to, to it is that I enjoyed the process. I, I, I love the creative process. So cheering in a band, you're playing the same 20 songs day in, day out. You know, and, and there's a lot of other shit and boredom that goes down with it. And I wanted just to create. I get so much joy to creating and collaborating. I am lucky to, to be busy. I think the reason why I am so busy is that 
I wear a lot of different hats. And I'm not, I'm not precious about a hierarchy in what you do. Like I can engineer, I can produce, I can mix. I think I can be a player in a session. I don't think anyone's better or more important than the other. I think it's the collective of all those people together. I'm very subtle in my shifting and movement of, of what I, you know, and I'll be very blunt sometimes, but not, not um, to deter someone from being creative. It's all about being creative and trying to inspire people to, to do or discover something new and what they're trying to achieve. Let's grab the tablet. We have to adventure it. A tabla. It's like an instinctual thing on the day that it work best. I could tell you like, you're inspired by just the, what's hanging in the room and the, the space. Like, well, grab it. Like, you know, grab a guitar. And then, I, you know, we plugged in this pedal there. And that's kind of how it starts. And I think that's how a lot of my sessions kind of evolve. Tape is like an analog camera. It blurs the lines a little bit. And that's my taste, which I love. I love that blurred image. I was using pretty much every piece of this in the last three days, yeah. And the tape machine. When I do work on tape, which I love tape, is the time between, the time between takes to think. And then rewinding that tape, you've got this moment where you're just kind of contemplating what to do next and what to do you know, thinking about the last take and the, just the sound of that tape, it's like soothing, <laughs> kind of... Um, digital doesn't allow that. It's like anything goes, which is the upside to it, but you have to create that space. You don't have to think too much about it because it is all instinctual, but just to give you space just to kind of dream a bit. Making music, it's that whole process that leads up to that, and you'll listen to it, and you have that joy of hearing it back loud with those speakers. I got introduced to Dyn Audio through um, a friend, Dylan Berry, who was doing sessions out in the desert. And I went out to, the, to this ranch, this amazing ranch, and here it was, this studio in the middle of nowhere. And they had Dyn Audio speakers in there, and I was like, what are these? And, you know, like, I'd heard of them, but I've never kind of listened to them. And I was just blown away with where the sound was sitting for me in a 3D perspective of distance, where that sound ends up. And for me, they kind of hit that spot where I really enjoyed where I was seeing the sound and getting inspired from that. That's the big thing for me. Like, are these speakers inspiring? Because um, I'm, you know, I'm not a very technical person. When I, when I break it down, I can't give you, I can tell you what frequencies they're throwing at me in a really technical sense, but what I'm hearing I really, really like, and it connects with me on a creative level. It's a sonic space. You can live in the whole day and be really pleasantly absorbed with it. And it ticked the boxes every, every place I've listened to music I've produced or mixed, and that's pretty much it for me. The best advice. The best advice is I don't overthink it, um, feel it, 